Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Coming to you one more time from Lincoln City, Oregon. Uh, what a beautiful day it is today. It may not be beautiful to you, but any day at the coast to me is a beautiful day. Uh, what a blessing we've had to come down here and spend some time with some friends. Uh, looking forward to now to getting home and getting back into the life as we're going to be Thanksgiving all day long, every day, all year long, right? A word of encouragement today comes from John chapter 3, verses uh, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave us one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send a Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. You know, I don't know if you've thought about those verses lately. Typically, if you've gone to church or grown up in church, you've learned those verses. But those verses are very important to us. Very important because they are a great reminder uh, that it was in God's love that he sent his son. It's God's love that Jesus not only came, but uh, died on a cross and rose again that we might have eternal life. That is because of God's love that everything we have, everything that's offered to us is available. Uh, because of God's love works first. Because look, God's love is not based on uh, what we do, but based on the fact that we're his creation. At the same time, uh, God does not force himself upon us. We're not forced to love him. We're not forced to choose him. He gives us that choice. Uh, we kind of call him a gentleman God or you know, a God whose love for us is so great that he's willing for us to choose not him. Otherwise, we'd probably be more like robots. And so God gives us that choice. But the second verse there in verse 17 says, Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, but so that the world might be saved through him. And of course, that again is a reminder that, that Jesus came and died on a cross when he didn't have to. You know, if you uh, read the stories, the Gospels, and what happened there, uh, certainly Jesus was more powerful that he could have come down off the cross, that he never had to be on the cross. Uh, if, if that had been God's will, he could have set up an earthly kingdom right then, but that wasn't God's will. Uh, God's will, God's plan was that Jesus would come and pay the ultimate price, that he would give his life for ours because we are not good enough to do so on our own. That, that is his death. Uh, that cleanses us, that makes us whole. Because why? Because there has to be a, a price paid for the penalty of our sin. God just can't look the other way. Sometimes when people wrong us, uh, we just look the other way like it didn't happen. And uh, and there's a, I guess there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, we certainly want to be forgiving to people and be graceful to people. But uh, with God, being a just God, there has to be a payment. There has to be a penalty paid in order to be restored to God. And that penalty, uh, that payment came through the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, the question now is, have you accepted it? Have you welcomed it into your life? Have you, uh, you know, repented and, uh, you know, been sorry for your sins and, and turned away from those sins that you might live for God? Uh, that's what it means to receive or accept that payment on our behalf. Um, we, we have to accept that payment. It's not automatic. It's, it's worth it. You know, the, the death of Jesus paid all the, the, the price. There's nothing left to be paid, but we have to accept that payment into our lives. But aren't you grateful that Jesus didn't come to condemn, but rather he came to make a way that we could be saved? Um, and then, of course, Jesus went to the, the side of the heaven. The, Jesus ascended to heaven to be at the side of God, and now we have the Holy Spirit leading and guiding us. What an awesome God we serve that he's forgotten nothing. Uh, everything is right there available for us. We just have to choose it to accept it. You know, as this is kind of the first weekend of Advent, the first Sunday of Advent is tomorrow, uh, we just want to invite you to start thinking about what does Christmas really mean? What should it really mean for us? Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to be here one more time. And Father, as we travel home, we pray for our safe traveling mercies. We also pray for those watching today that they uh, would have a great day today, that you would watch over them and uh, keep them safe as they do go about whatever they're doing. We pray, Lord, that you would bless them and that you would use them to bring wholeness, to bring love, to bring light to this world around us. And Father, as we head into the Advent season, we just pray this would be the year when many, many people choose to serve Jesus, choose to have Jesus in their lives, choose to, to be a part of your family. Father, we would certainly welcome them in and celebrate. Father, may the greatest gift that ever came that was Jesus, but Father, may we get a gift this season of family members and friends and loved ones coming to know you and to save you. Father, we're just grateful for all that you're about to do. Please bless those who need a special blessing, whatever the need may be. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, again, there you have it. God loves you. Uh, we love you too. We hope you have a great day today. And because today's Saturday, we're hoping you'll join us tomorrow in person at the church uh, or on our Facebook Live page or on our YouTube channel. Whatever the case, we would love to worship you tomorrow. Have a great day. God bless you. We'll see you soon.